I am so ready for this. I have been waiting like a whole year for this DLC, pr pretty much since the release of the game. But yes, the Lake House DLC is finally here. We finally get to talk about it. I finally get to play it. And you know, Night Springs was a good DLC and all, but I am ready to actually continue the story and see if anything leads up to Control 2, you know, we've heard a little... But the Lake House DLC is the second expansion released for Alan Wake 2. It was released just the other day on October 22nd. It follows Agent Estevez in a very Control-esque, Control-worthy adventure. You know, things get really weird right off the bat, right when entering the Lake House, and things just keep getting weirder throughout the DLC. But this DLC is bigger than Night Springs with a more cohesive story following kind of just one ish story and as i said it is available now by purchasing the deluxe edition or deluxe upgrade i don't know what it's called but you also receive night springs and some cosmetics and it's on sale right now i would go check it out why not but i've been blabbering on long enough let's actually get into the lake house dlc and see what everything is all about so first I want to get into the new story, you know, who you're playing as and what you're doing. And I'm going to try not to spoil too much. Maybe just talk about the first couple hours or so of the DLC. You know, the DLC just released. I don't want to spoil too much for you all, but still warning now. But like the last DLC, we do not take the role of Alan or Saga. Rather, as I said before, we take the role of FBC agent Kieran Estevez. As she first arrives in Bright Falls before meeting Saga, before meeting Alan, and it's kind of interesting, it's all told in the perspective of Estevez telling this all to Saga, like her experience or a story. Before I even knew you were on this case, Saga, the lake house was my first stop. She's telling Saga what she went through at the lake house before actually meeting up with Alan and Saga. But everything starts when the AWE alerts start going off in Bright Falls and Agent Estevez is called to the scene. With Cauldron Lake being a hot spot over the last few years, and it even brings up that the FBC has been to Cauldron Lake and Bright Falls many times in the past, not only for the Alan Wake dilemma in 2010, but other stuff in the past. 1970s, 6, 8, last one was in 2010. With all that stuff happening in Cauldron Lake and Bright Falls, the FBC set up a facility there called the Lake House, where they would study all of the AWEs and weird occurrences happening there. The facility was ran by the Marmont couple Diana and Jules, where here, all the different AWEs, as I said, were observed, and they even ran tests on different AWEs, different objects of power that originated out of Bright Falls. This is where they would test it. And at the time of your arrival, the Marmont couple are the heads of the facility. But when Estevez arrives, there is no one to be found, no one to greet her, no one to let her in. She just has to kind of find her way into the lake house to find out that it's pretty much completely abandoned. And seeing as it's pretty much abandoned, she has to get down to the bottom of everything as she was called to the scene, but there's no one there to tell her what the actual issue is. And through her endeavors in the lake house, she finds out that Shadow has taken over, Alan Wake's writing is somehow invading the facility, and there is the introduction of a all new Palera Tetelarian, I will never be able to pronounce that word, but we have an all new person that we get to meet. I won't go too much into that, I won't spoil them, but Estevez has to fight through some very strange SCP level monsters, and she has to figure out what's going on, she has to figure out what the AWEs were, she has to figure out what's going on with the Marmots because they might be possessed with the Shadow as well, and at the end of the day Estevez just has to figure out and fix everything that's going on before she goes and gets herself into another mess with Wake and Saga. But that's the premise of the story without spoiling too much. And yes, as I said, there is a whole lot more to the story. There's a whole lot more secrets to uncover and a couple of new characters to learn about. But Alan Wake 2 and its DLCs are just so dang good that I don't want to spoil any more yet, at least. You know, I will, I will probably talk about the DLC in the future. I'm thinking about doing an Alan Wake full breakdown with all the DLCs. I usually don't talk about DLCs. DLCs aren't usually my thing, but Alan Wake 2 is one of my favorite games ever, and it's one of the games I'll talk about the DLC, but I digress, I digress. <laughs> With the story out of the way, you're probably wondering if there's anything else new, and uh, yeah, obviously. <laughs> so with the story aside, let's now get into everything new and the things I noticed with the DLC. 
So first off, the change that probably everyone will notice right off the bat, but that is the control of Kieran Estevez instead of being Alan or Saga. You know, we were told that we would be taking back control of Alan and Saga and continuing their story, but I will say that playing as Estevez is practically the same. You use Saga's Glock ripoff and you're sporting a nice FBC jacket that is very similar to the FBI jacket that Saga wears. You know, it's practically the same, and we get to learn something new about a character that we didn't know that much about before. The next change is the setting or environments that you're in. Instead of old towns and creepy woods, we're going underground into an FBC facility, which actually looks right out of control. All of the different textures, environments, you know, the walls, the floor, everything looks right out of control, looks like the oldest house. I wonder why, but... But with that new setting, we still also get the crazy, wacky, Alan Wake, Sam Lakeness that we have in the original base game and even in Night Springs. But with those new locations also comes new enemies. We still see the Taken, which are called the Shadow, and that's actually what they are called in Control in the Alan Wake DLC of Control. They call them the Shadow. The Shadow overtakes, stuff like that. I just thought that was cool to see that brought back to here, where the FBC is referring to them as the Shadow, because... That's what the FBC refers to them as. But along with them, there are also, as I said, a new SCP level enemy. These long, stocky paint people that come out of the painting on the walls. They tower over you, they're creepy, they're fast, and there's only one way to kill the new enemies. That being a brand new weapon. This grenade launcher type gun that you put canisters in, it charges up and it shoots this blast that practically vaporizes them. I haven't tried to use it on the other enemies because I've saved my ammo for the paint people, but there is that. <laughs> and speaking of those new weapons, as I said, there is that grenade launcher type weapon, but on the side of the other weapons like shotgun and pistols, I could be crazy, but I think that it's all the same guns with just new textures. For example, like look at the shotgun. When you pick up the shotgun, it looks slightly different than the base game shotgun, but it's still still just a shotgun. But still, I did enjoy the different texture. I don't know. <laughs> and then we also see, a kind of see new manuscript pages. You will find a couple of manuscript pages, not in the sense or not in the way that Saga finds the manuscript pages, but... For example, there are two manuscript pages up on a whiteboard, and you will still get Alan reading it over. You will find one or two on the ground where Alan will read it over, and that is probably where I did bring up in the story breakdown that Alan's writing is invading the lake house somehow. And this is even before Alan is out of the dark place. Saga has not found Alan yet. We don't even know if Saga is in Bright Falls yet. So in reality, these writings could be what is bringing Alan back into the real world. I will leave that all for you to find out. And anything else that's new, I will also leave all of you to find and to probably play for yourself. I will probably, as I said, circle back to it in the future with a more in-depth review. But as of now, the DLC is still pretty new and I don't want to spoil too much for you all. With that said though, I want to move now to the last topic before getting to my thoughts on the DLC, and that is the connections to Control and possible setups for Control 2. You know, there was a lot of word that this would be the DLC to actually set up the story for Control 2 and show us what we'd actually be dealing with in that. As if you remember in Control, we had the AWE or the Alan Wake DLC that actually set up the events of Alan Wake 2, and there's some scenes in that DLC that is pretty parallel to Alan Wake 2 scenes, like the scene with Alan and Zane in the hotel room. With that in mind though, everyone expected the Lake House DLC to be a setup for Control 2, especially with the environment. I mean, just look at it. With everything also running in Northlight, it literally looked and kind of felt like I was walking around the corridors of the oldest house in Control. Only difference is Control is a way like lighter play, play style? I don't know how to explain it, but in Control you're like throwing boxes, you're flying around, you're doing crazy powers and stuff. Without all of that, this could be the same exact game to me. Same, same! but different, but still same. And when looking at the lake house and how everything is designed and how there are loops and overlaps, this could just be an extension of the oldest house that they somehow built in Bright Falls. We know that's possible with the Ocean View Motel, all of that. But all of the gear, all of the computers, all of the Dr. Darling recordings you can find, it all looks straight out of the oldest house and it all looks straight out of control. Which is why, again, a lot of us think that this will be the setup for Control 2. And I keep saying that, and I'm sorry, that's probably getting annoying. 
With that, people are wondering who are the Marmots? Who is Jules and Diane? Or D Diana? I can't, I don't remember. <laughs> Sorry. But what is their connection to the FBC? And what is their connection to Casper Darling? As there is word in the DLC, I won't spoil too much, but there's word that Dr. Darling might actually be influenced by something darker and might be going on the path that he shouldn't be going down. But with all of that, we also get a look into why, just why the FBC is actually in Bright Falls. We know they're there because of the Alan Wake incident in 2010, but as I said at the beginning, they've been investigating and observing stuff there for years. So in this DLC, there's a lot of papers, a lot of documents you can find that talks about all of the different occurrences and all of the Bright Falls and Cauldron Lake AWE stuff going on and all the stuff that has gone on throughout the years. That was just really cool, but also ties into finding all of the Alan Wake stuff in control, like the thermos, this and that. Then again, though, I think that was just kind of a Easter egg or just, you know, tying in stuff. The last connection to Control, without talking about Control 2, is all of the documents and computer files that you can find that just reference the oldest house, that reference what happened in Control, what happened with the director. You can just find documents about all of that stuff while you're exploring the lake house, and it's all very cool to find that they wrapped it all together very well. And I might not have brought up any real connections or lead-ups to Control 2. But that's because I think you all should go uncover it for yourselves. As I keep saying, go play it. This is an amazing DLC. You know how much I like Alan Wake 2. Go play the DLC. It's 100% worth it. And as I said, it's on sale. It's on sale. But when it comes to my own thoughts on the matter, though, I think they are setting up Control 2 in this DLC. You'll see why when you actually play it. I don't want to go too far into it. But I do think they're at least setting up the timeline of events. I think something in this DLC is going to lead to Control 2. But I'll just leave that there. Now, on to the last topic before, you know, wrapping things up, and that is my own thoughts and what I think about the Lake House DLC. You know, I've been waiting for a while for this DLC, pretty much, as I said, since the release of the game. I've been very excited. It took me a week to finish the game's story, and I instantly wanted more. I instantly wanted some DLC. Now that we have it, what are my thoughts? Well, first, I just want to say, rest in peace to James McCaffrey the voice of Alex Casey and many more legends in gaming. But he was actually supposed to be a big part of this DLC along with the Night Springs DLC, but with his tragic and unexpected passing, we did not get that Casey as Tevez team up that everyone really wanted. And we will probably no longer see the one and only Alex Casey, Max Payne. It's so sad, it is so sad, but I just wanted to say, rest in peace, James McCaffrey. Your legendary characters will live on forever. But now onto something a little less sad. As I said a couple times, I absolutely love the environments, the settings, and everything that Lake House brought to the table in this DLC, like the actual Lake House, not Lake House brought to Lake House. You get it. But getting to see the brand new environment, not the same woods or old towns, was really nice. It was a great change of pace. And I think that the designers and animators and the people who just created everything did a very, very good job. I mean, the settings and environments in the original base game were already fantastic. And that just followed over to this DLC. It was perfect. Perfect. Everything down to the last minute details next is i loved all the little details and easter eggs that we got to see in this dlc because lake house is packed with small little things like let's say you get hit by one of the paint monsters your coat will slowly get more and more paint on it from the monsters that's just a good attention to detail or a little easter egg that i really liked was the elevator brand being pain i mean it might be spelt differently but you know they know what they were doing with that I don't know, there was just a bunch of little small stuff that you'll see that is either homages to other games or easter eggs to control or small things that were just great attention to detail. And I think that they killed it with that. And now I will address, I'll go back to, I, I did read somewhere I thought that the DLC was going to be Saga and Alan, which I was actually looking forward to and I was pretty surprised seeing as we played Estevez. Not that I'm mad or upset about it at all, because I actually liked playing as Estevez and seeing her story play out and seeing why she was in Bright Falls. Looks like she wasn't there for Alan Wake, she was there for something completely else, kind of. And it led up to her catching Alan, led up to everything happening. Sure, it was because Alan was writing it, but you get the gist. Lastly, I liked the length of this DLC. Sure, it wasn't as long as it could have been, and sure, it wasn't a full-length game, it was a DLC, but Night Springs was kind of disappointingly short. 
Not that that was a disappointing DLC at all. I absolutely loved Night Springs, but it was a little bit too short and I felt like myself and a few others wanted a longer DLC. The Lake House solved that. It's a good few hours. It'll keep you in your seat entertained for a good chunk of time. But as I said, it's only a DLC and it could only be so long, which the same can be said about this video, which can only be so long. And I think I've been blabbering on about the Lake House DLC for long enough. I think you all should go play it for yourselves. I think I'm just going to wrap everything up with some final thoughts now. You know, everything was great. Everything in this DLC was great, in my opinion. I love the DLC. I think it was actually better than Night Springs. I didn't think I was going to like it more than Night Springs, but I did. I liked it that much. You know, everything about the DLC was super solid. I enjoyed expanding Alan Wake's 2 story, getting some Control 2 Easter eggs, and learning something new about a character that we didn't know that much about. And I said that before. I think I, I, think I literally said that verbatim, but... <laughs> But it's also exciting to see the second DLC. We've been waiting for both DLCs. We finally have them both. But at the same time, that's very sad because that's the end of Alan Wake 2. Alan Wake 2 is one of my favorite games. It was my favorite game of 2023. It was so solid. I wanted it to win game of the year. But looking at it now, it's over. We're done with Alan Wake 2 content. We might get updates and maybe small little add-ons here and there. But no more DLC, we got the two big DLCs, and now we just have to wait for Control 2, which this has got me so much more excited for. You know, I love Alan Wake, I love Alan Wake 2, I loved Night Springs, and I love the lake house. It's the best. I love it. It's a great game, it's a great story. Alan Wake 2 is an almost perfect game. I recommend you all to play it if you haven't. I recommend you all to play the DLCs if you haven't. It's on sale now. I think base game is like 20 bucks or maybe 30 bucks. The deluxe edition might be on sale too. I don't know, I'll throw that up on screen now, but go try it. Lastly, last thing I wanna say is one more. Rest in peace to James McCaffrey. You will be missed. I will miss Max Payne. I will miss Alex Casey. I will miss the director. Yeah, I, I don't know. This is long enough. Let's just end things here. Then again, I still want to hear all of your thoughts on Alan Wake 2, the Lake House DLC, even Night Springs DLC in this video in the comments now. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more like it, maybe want to see a full breakdown of the entire Alan Wake 2 story, why not hit that like and subscribe now to stay up to date on everything to come. If you want to support everything to come and more videos like this, plus get videos up to a day early and get your name at the end of future videos, there's just no names yet. <laughs> Check out a membership to the channel now by pressing that little join button below. And lastly, head over to Billy the Whip on any music platform now to hear all of my home cooked jams, all of the jams in this video. Well, at the end of this video, but they are mediocre, I guess. They're not the best. It's me. That's cool. I, Billy the Whip. <laughs> With us here, my head is falling off. I say that all the time. It's actually falling off right now. It's falling off of my body. But I hope you all had a great day. Thank you all for the viewing pleasure. And I hope tomorrow is just as good as today. Unless today wasn't that good. Then I hope you have a great day today. And you have a great day tomorrow. Bye. The flames growing, flow water is flowing. No paddle still rowing. Can't reap without sowing. Ain't no cut without mowing. Ain't loaning no tricks. Holding my hand until I'm closing. But I'm rolling down this hill like the rocks I've been throwing. Zoning.